Hi, we welcome you to the Companion Chapel. I'm Tammy, this is Michael, and we are Bible teachers. We examine the Bible by covering each book chapter by chapter and verse by verse for you to absorb the precious subject matter being conveyed. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the one great subject of the Word of God. The whole Bible is about him directly or indirectly, and everything centers in and around him. Jesus Christ is the master key to your inner peace, your salvation of God. Jesus Christ is your personal key to all answers and explanations as we travel through this world on our way home to God, our Heavenly Father. Jesus Christ will show you the way. Do you feel there is more to God's Word than you're being taught? We invite you to discover the Word of God with us. And um, we're going to say a prayer like we always do. And we repent in Yeshua Messiah's perfect, precious name. And we pray for wisdom, understanding, counsel, knowledge, and strength. And here we are up to Genesis chapter 17, verse 1. We finished up chapter 16. And um, let's just get right into it, Tammy. Um, Genesis chapter 17, verse 1. And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Oh, big verse. Big verse right off the hop for today. And um, when Abram was 90, nine years old, pretty healthy guy, still running the show. Um, you know, there's no GMO foods. There's no, hardly any pollution. I can tell you that much back then. Uh, nice climate, lots more oxygen in the air anyway. Besides all that, let's get down to um, what's being taught here. So the Lord appears unto Abraham. He says, I am. That's Yahshua. When Moses asks him, what's your name? And God goes, I am that I am. And the Almighty God. And let's look at this Almighty else should die. And this is Almighty. This is God's power to supply. This is God's power as a giver of everything you need. When you say Almighty God, this is a special word. This is God is the source of grace. This is God is the all bountiful. Um, compared to the Creator, He's the giver, all bountiful. Everything you need, God gives and has allowed us. It's man that messes it up. And um, what else do we have in this verse, Tammy? Almighty God, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me. That's there's a commandment. He's like continue to walk before me walk in front of me let's, let's let's see you and there's a clear instruction here and be thou perfect but don't you think ever that you're going to be perfect there was only one perfect and that was jesus christ yeshua messiah this word perfect needs some um analyzing and we see that this word perfect means god saying to us all of us you walk before me and you be sincere to your heart have integrity um, let's see. How, okay, sorry. Immature, if you're an immature Christian, you're non-sincere in knowing the scriptures. If you want to use this word perfect, but you shouldn't because that's not, that's a poor translation. It's more like if you're sincere, mature, you're sincere in knowing the scripture. And remember God says in Hosea 6.6, 6, he wants your free will love. And Christ reiterates that in Matthew 9 and 12. He says, he wants your free will love. He doesn't want your sacrifices and you going through the motions. And this is a great chapter about people going through the motions and playing church and think, if I just do this, I'll be good with God. God wants your free will love and you have to, you can't love someone that you don't know. And that's just like the Bible teaches itself here, Tammy. So here's some instructions from God. And this is to all of us. Go ahead, Tam. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. And um, God's going to make his covenant. This is a testament. Um, sorry, go ahead, Tim. And Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying. So when he said, I'll multiply thee exceedingly, don't overlook that. Exceedingly is a big word. Exceedingly is greatly. Multiply thee greatly. It's not like, yeah, you're going to have an extended family. Watch out for that family reunion. There's going to be like 50, 60 people. We mean this blanketed the planet. 
And we're going to see more about that in a few minutes as we carry on here. And Abram fell on his face like you should. You humble yourself. You, you, you kneel before the Lord. You observe his power as the Almighty, the giver. He's the one that gives and allows you. Everything belongs to God. He's allowing you. And you should give thanks for everything. Go ahead, Tam. As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. So we have a covenant going. This is also, you could use the word testament. God's giving this testament. It's his statement. It's your faith statement from Genesis to Revelation. Let's let this flow a little bit, Tammy. Go ahead. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. Let's check this out for a second. Now we're in verse 5 here. When God's saying what this covenant is going to be, thou shalt be a father of many nations. Remember that all nations, whomsoever will, comes into the nation of God. All blessings to the world. Um, Christ became the blessing to the world, making it whomsoever will. Everyone can come in. It's like a kinsman redeemer type thing. It's, it's We're all God's children. He wants your free will love. He makes this covenant with this particular seed line of people whose responsibility is to hold this covenant for everybody doesn't make them more special abram was more special but we're just saying you can't say well i believe i'm of the seed line therefore i'm a chosen one i'm special you better hit the floor bell and humble yourself we god made us all and it was good and that's right in the first part of uh, the book of genesis which we just recently taught in the first few verses um Sorry, Tim. I'm not allowed to say um anymore. I know it's a bad habit. I'll get over it. Neither shall thy name be called Abram anymore. God's changing his name. So Abram meant, um, high father. Abram was the man. He was the guy. It was all his stuff. It was everybody looked to Abram as the father. And God chose Abram to be the covenant. I'm going to make this. And you make sure this gets spread properly. And that shall be generation to generation. And here we have, he calls Abraham now, which means father of many nations. And let's look at this word Abraham. He adds the letter H in there. And, you know, we get into some biblical numerics here. H means five. He adds grace, father of many nations, to the Almighty, the giver of grace. Go ahead, Tim. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thy, of thee. Yeah, we see a king line come out of here right up to Christ. And we see the priest line come right, right through to Christ. This Christ being Levite, Jewish, and of brother Judah, of brother Levi. We'll just, we'll let that settle for a bit. Let's talk about some kings. And we still see one sitting up there in England there, Queen Elizabeth. The kings that were before her, even down to King James, who commissioned the Bible that's in front of us. We study from the King James. And um, sorry to make me say I'm again, Tammy. Go ahead, verse 7. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee, and to thy seed after thee. So he's establishing a covenant, 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 it's a testament. There's rules and regulations, there's conditions. It's This is what this lesson is starting out. God's going to make some conditions he wants you to follow. God wants your free will love in the end. He wants, you can't love someone you don't know. You have to understand and have a working knowledge of, of this book, of your Bible. This covenant that God's allowed us. But he makes some rules. And we see what happens when he makes some rules. And now people think, well, if I just do a few of these things, then I'm in good, right? Like if I just give some money and um, we're going to see what one of these rules is, you know, I'm good, right? No, you have to have a working knowledge. God wants your free will love as it's written. You're sincere. Your integrity. It's got to be in your heart, in you and all around you. 
the Holy Spirit. And so we have, go ahead, Tammy, let's read the next verse. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. So here we have, he's talking about all of us. Um, you have to claim your promise. You have to, It's an inheritance for you. The rules are you have to love God. And to love someone, you have to know them. And you can't know them by a book written about the Bible. You have to know the Bible. You can't love God, listen to sermon after sermon about the Bible and about catchy little catchphrases and and buying books and CDs about the Bible. You have to know your Bible. And that's what me and Tammy do. We teach the Bible. God teaches us through here. All of us. Faith and works. Remember in the book of James, faith without works is dead. Works is your working knowledge of the Bible. Works ends up being your righteous acts, which is your clothing in heaven. And um, go ahead, Tammy. And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. That's perpetual generations. This seed line didn't just mysteriously end like you hear some people saying. The seed line didn't just, oh, well, the ten tribes went somewhere and they just mixed in here and mixed in there. Or twelve tribes. We have twelve tribes of Israel that come out of Abram through Isaac, through Jacob, and then we have twelve patriarchs. There's 12 tribes of Israel. One's called Judah, Levi, and the rest of them. They became, the 10 tribes ended up being, call, being called Manasseh and Ephraim, which means double blessed and forgetful. So over the years and generations and moving through the planet and going up over the Caucasus Mountains and then heading over and expanding, you, you're going to forget where you came from. That's fine. And, um... What we're trying to say here is the covenant doesn't get forgot. The generations of Abraham didn't just peter out somewhere. Is that the right word? Yes. Oh. The generations became as many as the sands of the sea and the stars of the sky. And with this covenant, this testament, the Old and New Testament together. Go ahead, Timmy. Let's read first. This is my covenant which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. So this is his covenant, everlasting covenant. Covenant, You have to have understanding. Now we get into some um, little rules. Not little. I take that back. There are some rules here. And we're going to get into the law of circumcision. Now this was a blood sacrifice. This was a blood ordinance, as well as a blood law. And of course, all those have been nailed to the cross with Christ, who is the one and last blood sacrifice there is and ever will be. But we have some stuff going on here, and we're going to talk about this. This is my covenant. You shall cut between me and you, and thy seed after thee, perpetual generations, right until the very end, including us and after us. So, Let's stop there. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. Okay, so go ahead, Tammy. Let's read the next verse, and we're going to analyze this fairly deeply. Go ahead, Tim. And ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. Okay, so. Not a good note there, and I skipped right over it. You shall, all ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, it shall be a covenant. Okay, so God makes this covenant with everybody, and it and it's looking like it's a male thing. Well, let's just, let's just get right into it. In the book of Romans, Ephesians, Corinthians, we get taught that the circumcision now after Christ has been on the cross is of the heart. The circumcision, like people were using these blood ordinances and blood laws and blood sacrifices they weren't meaning anything they lost their meaning and value because people were just playing church they're going okay i got that done you know i'm good like you know I, i'm good with god because i did what he told me he wants your love he wants the circumcision is of your heart 
as it's written in the book of Ephesians, um, as it's written in Corinthians, and um, what's the other book? It's Romans, and the covenant is between God and you. It's what he wants in your heart. That's just a superficial thing. It's the uncovering of your heart and opening your heart to God. It can't be closed off. Uh, let's go at 12, Tammy. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you, every man child in your generations. He that is born in the house or bought with money of any stranger which is not of thy seed. So, you know, you can also see that God's teaching some health laws. It's what God wanted. That's fine. We all, we learn from the New Testament that these laws were nailed to the cross. It's circumcision of the heart, but it's fine today for hygiene. It's uh, circumcision of grace through the blood on the cross is what we have now. Back then, God wanted to see you guys obey. I'm telling you to do this. You do this on the eighth day to the kids. And that's the rule. I want to see that happen. And, and go ahead, Timmy. He that is born in thy house and he that is bought with thy money must need be circumcised. And my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. So we have the eight. They want it on the eighth day. And... We know eight is also a big number. It's after seven. And we look at the seven vials, seven seals, seven trumpets, that's spiritual completeness. And then we have eighth day, and that's the new beginnings. That's where the new life becomes. So this is symbolic of the circumcision of the heart. Once you open up your heart to God, there's, there's no closing it. And that's what having a new life, being born again, being shedding your old for new. Okay, let's um, carry on here, Tammy. And the uncircumcised man child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He hath broken my covenant. So now, you know what? Today it would be like. Those who don't have Christ in their heart are cut off. And that's all there is to it. Here we have some rules God set in this stage for the covenant, for following the conditions that God wants and God demands. And it's it's God commands. It's up to you. You have free will love if you're going to follow it or if you're not going to follow it. We read very clearly in um, Hosea 6.6, 6, we always go to, God doesn't want your fake love. He wants your free will love. He doesn't want you to just to go through the motions. He wants to know who loves him and who doesn't love him. Because he's your father. And he wants to know, as it, and then he, furthermore, he brings Christ. And Christ, all the blood sacrifices are nailed to the cross. There's no more blood sacrifices. That's an abomination. And then in Corinthians, we're taught that the circumcision is of the heart. And it's very clear in there, and you should probably go to uh, Romans chapter. Oh, so let's, you should try the book of Corinthians. Look it up, the circumcision in there. And it absolutely becomes means nothing anymore. But for health reasons, you can go for it. But let's just stay on track here and let that flow, and you can let it sink in. It's circumcision of the heart. Now we're going on to a different subject here. Good, Sarah. Let's see. 15.10. The God said unto Abraham, as for Sarai, thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. So God's starting to change some names here. And again, he adds the letter H to her name. In the Hebrew, that's five. So he adds grace to her name. So we got a, a grace to Sarah for holding out. And, you know, maybe she didn't have the same faith that Abraham had, but she stuck it out. So she's a good girl. And a really good girl. And Abraham is... Like, if you could believe, like, continually um, listening to God, following God, walking in, with God the whole time, getting told all these promises, and sticking it out. And that's what it means, patience, as we're taught. Go ahead, Timmy. And I will bless her, and give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her, 
and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. So, we're talking the king line comes through her. So it comes through her son Isaac and through Jacob who gets renamed Israel. And we have kings throughout the Bible, um, kings of Israel. And we have the king line that we talked about, even King James. Go ahead, Tammy. 17. Then Abram fell upon his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? And shall Sarah, that is ninety years old, bear? So, like, let's analyze this and how faithful Abram has been. Abram's the man. He's been holding it out. He's been following God. We saw what happens when he gets a little bit scared, when he lets fear into just a little bit, which is what will happen with everybody. But he has faith, continual faith faith following God and so is he laughing at God I don't think so he's uh, I would when we analyze this he's laughing with like happiness God's giving him blessings that's like joy go ahead Timmy and Abraham said unto God oh that Ishmael might live before thee so Abraham's still getting a little bit flustered here because he's old. Sarah has clearly gone through menopause and she's old. So he's, you know, there's probably a little bit, you know, it'd be overwhelming to the thinking person's mind. Abraham was no slouch. He was no vagabond. He was no beggar. He's the man. He's got all these people around him and he's holding it together like nobody's business. And here he is a hundred and Sarah's, old and God saying yeah she's gonna have a kid so you know like they're, they got a little bit nervous laughing possibly laughing with joy and go ahead Tammy oh wait a minute and Abraham sorry and God said is it okay are you talking about Ishmael and let's see what God says 19 and God said Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed and thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. So the, word, the name Isaac, and here we get into, this is just the greatest thing, to thinking about what these people's lives were like and how much faith they had and how they were working and how they were living and making it through every day and, and just seeing like, God's promises and blessings and being the Almighty, all bountiful. And um, see what happens when Abraham has all this faith. And um, it's just a great lesson to see that Isaac, the word Isaac itself means laughter. And here God is naming the second person, I believe. I think he's only named two people, Ishmael. No, he's pre-naming Isaac before he's born. God knows you before you were born, as it's written in the book of Jeremiah. I knew you before. Like, we all were with God before, Job chapter 38, singing together with God. Not in these flesh bodies. God has to put us through this flesh for this time. Now, let's stay on subject here, Tammy. Now, <laughs> Sarah, the white show, what verse were you on? I oh. just read 19. Okay, 19. You're going to call him Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him. So you can see God teach him. First he says, I'm going to establish it with you, Abram. And through your prodigy, through this seed line, through... What's the better word? I used it earlier today. The generations? Through the generations. The sands of the sea. This covenant is for whomsoever will. It's this testament. The Old and New Testament. And God is abiding... You know, you want God with you for sincere, free will, love, and God will abide. You as an individual, a community, as a country, when God's abiding, only then can come blessings, peace, security, and glory. But look what happens when you start to kick God out of the equation. It's a, It just turns into a third world hell. You kick him out of the schools, check it out. You kick him out of your country, you want to wipe him off the dollar bills, everything belongs to God Almighty. And you want to kick him out, you better watch it. And um, here we go, we got a covenant, and we're saying we got the king line established, we got 
generations upon generations. I used a better word earlier for perpetual generations. We got God saying Abram, Isaac, and then Jacob, Israel, and all all throughout the planet. Go ahead, Tim. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him, and will make him fruitful, and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget, and I will make him a great nation. You know, God, God saints, you know, listen, Ishmael's you, one of your kids too, and I blessed him, and will make him fruitful and multiply exceedingly. These are the Arab nations. And I will make him a great nation. But remember in the last chapter, verse, chapter 16, around verse 12, they're madmen. And it's still like that today. It, just be honest with yourself and check it out. Look at the nations of the planet. Just, and you can see who's causing the madman type trouble. Can we walk with this Bible through your country? And not get our heads lopped off, get kidnapped, have extortions happen, or get blown up. Now, we'll just leave it at that because we're just trying to make friends here. And we're just telling it like it is. And we're just teaching God's word perpetually through the generations. Let's go ahead, Timmy. Whomsoever will, I must say. Tim, we have to stop for a second. Whomsoever will comes into the many member body. When your heart gets circumcised and you let Christ in. It's, we all want more of everybody together. As soon as somebody repents, it doesn't matter who they are, where they are born, what circumstances, the angels in heaven sing, as it's written. So we pray. That's when we say we pray for enemies. We pray for their souls. We pray, I wish you guys didn't look at me like I want, you want to cut my head off, like you want to blow me up or kidnap me or, or do nasty things to me. I wish that... I could just come there and we could just walk anywhere on this planet and just, you are my brother. Okay, 21. Uh -huh. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. Okay, so he's lining up. Who's going to be the king line? Who's going to carry this covenant? Is Ishmael carrying it? No, he's not carrying it. The Arab nation's carrying the Bible. We're not trying to make any enemies here. No, they're not. Is are, are the nations that come through Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, through the twelve tribes carrying the Bible? Are they the are they the people of Manasseh and Ephraim? Are they the double blessed and forgetful, the sons of Joseph? I think so. Look at who is the double blessed nations on the planet. And you can see where the Bible has traveled. And you can see what happens when they kick the Bible out. When you leave God in or when you allow God in, when God is abiding, like the last verse of the book of Ezekiel, you get peace, security, glory, and blessings. As soon as you kick God out or start to question God or start to criticize the very word that you're getting judged on because you don't understand it, then you're in a heap of hurt. And you can just see it all over the planet. Go ahead, Tammy. Let's turn and wrap it up here. And he left off talking with him, and God went up from Abraham. Look at Abraham. What a guy. What a great friend it would be to hang around someone like that all the time. He, he's so obedient. He's such a steady guy. He doesn't waver. You can just imagine all the little comments that he had to absorb. What a monumental drag when people start running their mouth off. But he held firm. He's a great example. And um, go ahead, Timmy, 23. And Abraham took Ishmael, his son, and all that were born in his house, and all that were bought with his money, every male among the men of Abraham's house, and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin in the selfsame day as God had said unto him. Okay, go ahead. So, listen, uh, Abraham obeys. This is the whole thing that we're going to learn. Obey God. Don't sit there and question God. Don't go, hey, I don't understand this part of the Bible, so yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make up something here on my own. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sense of this my way. Because I don't understand it. Or, no, I'm going to listen to this guy over here because, yeah, he's got a great book. And look at all the people following. CD special. Oh, I can get a membership there. Listen, God's Word, the Bible, this covenant, the New Testament, Old Testament, all of it is for you. Um, Let's go on. This is about obeying. About 
free willing. That's loving, serving, and getting the blessings, peace, and security. The only inner peace that you'll ever have. Go ahead, Tammy. And Abraham was 90 years old and nine when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. Whew. Okay, go 25. And Ishmael, his son, was 13 years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. And you'll see, there's a lot of cultures, countries um, that do that to their children when they're 13. They're following this. Abram is the father of many nations. That's what his name means. Through Ishmael became the Arab nations. Through Isaac became the Christian nations. Um, we do it, Christian people, generally do it on the eighth day of, of the child being born. And there's a whole bunch of people, other nations and religions, that do it on the 13th year still to this day. Go ahead, Tammy. Let's finish it up. 26. In the selfsame day was Abraham circumcised and Ishmael his son. 27, Tammy. And all the men of his house, born in the house, and bought with money of the stranger, were circumcised with him. And so let's just remember that to do our little wrap-up here, the circumcision is of your heart. There is no blood ordinances or sacrifices. There is no blood laws. You... You look at the blood of Jesus Christ and you allow that into your heart and you understand that that's what washes your sins and allows you the inner peace, allows you eternal life. Christ wears those sins for you. So you humble yourself and and you have a change of heart. You have your heart circumcised. It's called repent and born again and through the baptism as it's written in Ephesians, Corinthians, Romans, and that'll be all for today, Tim. Let's do a little wrap up. Michael and I hope you enjoyed studying with us at Companion Chapel Worldwide Ministry. We are a nonprofit organization that promotes teaching the Bible to whomsoever will. If you would like to help spread the Word of God by making a donation to this ministry, you can go to our webpage, www.companionchapel.com, go to the Contact Us page, About Us page, or become a member of our worldwide ministry. You can offer your precious gift there. Love to hear from you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Stay tuned for Genesis chapter 18. Don't you dare miss it.